Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I haven't made a video in quite a while, but today I want to talk about the preservation of the Quran. For those who don't know, it is considered a major miracle within Islam that the Quran has been perfectly preserved. This is an assertion that is made constantly by Muslims. That other books, other religious books, other scriptures, where it changed over time, but the Quran has been preserved from day one, letter for letter. This preservation is considered a miracle which is supposed to prove that Islam is true and that Allah watches over the Quran and preserves Islam. There are so many discussions trying to get to the bottom of this. I just want to address several problems that I have with this whole issue. First off, which Quran are we talking about? What is that Quran that is supposed to have been preserved? Muslims read a Quran today, which is one of the several readings that are available of the Quran. We have several old manuscripts of the Quran that we can trace this Quran back to. Those manuscripts seem to have some huge differences, but they also seem to have significant similarities and agreements, which probably suggests that they lead back to one source, that is the original Quran. The problem is that this is just a suggestion, we cannot prove it. We don't have the original Quran, we don't know what the original Quran looked like, what it sounded like. We have the notable manuscript that is attributed to Uthman, we have the Sana manuscript. But it is then up to interpretation and to belief to lead those manuscripts back to one singular book, which probably never existed. How is that miraculous? If this is supposed to be a main miraculous feature of Islam, of the Quran, if this was Allah's plan, shouldn't there be one original book that we can verify? Shouldn't there be one book in the beginning that we know for certain is the original Quran? And that Quran would then be perfectly preserved. No change can be made to it. It cannot be left up to interpretation. With the situation at hand right now, no scholar in the world, no matter what you want to argue, can sit down and agree and say, we have proven that the Quran has been preserved. This is objectively true. It's not objectively true. You cannot say that. And that is not miraculous. A miraculous, perfect preservation, which is supposed to make us believe in Islam, should not be up to interpretation and faith. We are supposed to believe that the Quran was compiled and kept by the important successors of Muhammad's caliphate. And then the Quran spread in its perfectly preserved form, preserved letter for letter. But we cannot find that perfectly preserved book. Moreover, we also don't know how the compilation of the Quran actually happened. In the time of Muhammad, there was no physical book called the Quran. There were only recitations. Muhammad spoke the book. It was in people's memories and on people's notes. After Muhammad's death, the memorizers and scribes put the notes together, supposedly, after many of them died, mind you. And through a very hard, difficult task, the compilation was completed and the Quran, as it is today, was formed. We can't really trust this process of compilation, however. They were people, humans, they make mistakes. I would call it miraculous if we didn't have to trust certain people, if we could verify their work and confirm that they have indeed preserved it perfectly that they have done it perfectly. We can't do that. We don't know whether the scribes and the memorizers of the Quran, which Muhammad recited to them, memorized and wrote it down correctly. They are humans. They could have made mistakes. Even if most of them were in agreement with each other, they could still have made mistakes and agreed upon a mistake. This is again up to trust, something that we cannot look at and verify. Now, if we trust that these manuscripts indeed do lead back to one Quran, and that this Quran was indeed the first accurate Quran, and that the compilation of this Quran was indeed done perfectly, and that the memorizers and scribes did indeed 100% do a perfect job, and those are a lot of assumptions, a lot of leaps of faith, then there is still one final leap of faith that we have to make, which is Muhammad. How do we trust Muhammad? And this is the main problem with the whole preservation argument. Let us say that the Quran has been perfectly preserved. Let us assume, let us grant that for the sake of the argument. What exactly does it matter? What exactly does it say? If the text of the Quran, if the content of the Quran, if the quality of the Quran is poor, if it is unreliable, if it is bad, then what does it matter whether it has been perfectly preserved or not? A book can be full of nonsense, it can be full of pseudoscience, full of superstition, full of illogical 
crap, but it can be perfectly preserved. If you fully perfectly preserve a book that is full of crap, then you will have preserved crap. Of course, to be fair, if you perfectly preserve a book that is just brilliant, flawless, then you will have perfectly preserved brilliance. But that's the issue. The perfect preservation of this book, which we as established cannot verify, and nobody will ever be able to verify, is entirely irrelevant to whether Islam is true or not. Actually, let me correct that. We have good reason to doubt the preservation of the Quran. And if the Quran has not been perfectly preserved, then how can we trust it? If, on the other hand, the Quran has been perfectly preserved, then that is still not reason enough to believe in the miraculousness of the Quran. It could still be full of nonsense. We don't personally know Muhammad. We don't know who he was. We don't know what his motives were. We don't know whether he was mentally stable or not. Many reports suggest that he had mental problems. Maybe he was a liar. Maybe he was trying his best to be honest, but he could not be honest. Maybe he was trying to keep his sanity, but he had a psychosis. Maybe other things were at play. Maybe he was being deceived by others. Of course, Muslims will resort to the excuse that the followers of Muhammad said great things about him, that he was reliable and all that. But that's not an argument. You will find that the followers of certain people will say great things about them, even if they are pretty terrible people. You can't expect a group of loyal people to be completely unbiased about their opinion on Muhammad. If we look at the Quran itself, we see that the Quran talks multiple times about how people call Muhammad a liar or a sorcerer, as people would accuse each other in the past quite frequently, or a poet. And the Quran jumps to Muhammad's defense all the time. From there, we clearly see that people did not unambiguously consider Muhammad a reliable, sane, healthy person. If we look at the reports, the hadiths about Muhammad, about the things that he has done and said, we have too many flaws, too much information that he has shared, which is ridiculous, which is inaccurate, false prophecies. If we look at the Quran, we have a book that is extremely repetitive, that doesn't flow, that is not easy to read, that is obviously not easy to understand, that cannot be considered one of the greatest literary works of all time. And that is, if you look at it, full of misinformation. I myself made a compilation of 60 scientific mistakes in the Quran. We have books, we have texts that are much older than the Quran and much less significant than the Quran that were preserved. So the Quran is not necessarily miraculous in its preservation. We're talking about Islam. We're talking about the religion that makes this big claim of the perfect preservation which Allah will take care of. We're talking about Islam, which has the Quran at its core, believed to be Allah's direct speech that existed before the creation of humankind. You would expect that Muslims, that these people would give such huge importance to this Quran that they would do their best to preserve preserve this book. It would then, as a result, not be too surprising that the Quran would have been preserved. Therefore, I would not even consider it miraculous if it had been preserved. But look, despite the effort, despite the importance, the preservation cannot be verified. I don't know how else to say this, but the entire argument surrounding the perfect preservation of the Quran is nonsensical. It is incoherent. It doesn't do anything in proving Islam true. It is merely a matter of faith. If you want to believe that it happened, then you will believe that it happened. You certainly don't have any proper sources to verify the objective truth of the perfect preservation of the Quran. It does not exist. This is not a good reason to believe in Islam. On the contrary, this is a good reason to doubt Islam even more. Thanks for listening. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. If you want to support me and what I'm doing, please consider supporting me on Patreon or on apostateprofit.com. I appreciate your support very much. I will be back. Have a fantastic day and stay away from Islam.